Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guys, the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, special episode of Go With The Heat. Season 3 has come to an end. Last week, Season 3, Episode 24, Heroes of the Revolution published. Here we are at our Season 3 look back. And Season 4 look ahead to the, as I'm dubbing it, the Dallas season <laughs> of Miami Vice. <laughs> <laughs> This is a special recording, too, because believe it or not, all three of us are sitting in the same room in what I'm calling, and another term, new term now, in Studio Go With The Heat <laughs> in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> John has caught an airplane out of frozen Seattle to the mid-70s, that is Phoenix. Yes, it turns out I escaped just in time because apparently Washington is being hit with what sounds like a hurricane. (laughs) (laughs) So they even closed Crystal Mountain, which is a popular ski resort where I live, because they're going to get about three to four feet of snow tonight. Damn. Just tonight. Damn. I ran the air conditioning while I was driving around today. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, it's still kind of warm here, okay? (laughs) I I talked to my boss earlier today and I told him, I'm not sure if I'm coming back. (laughs) I don't think I'm coming back. (laughs) just wait till may just wait till may yes (laughs) you will run fast (laughs) so like i mentioned we have a special episode we're all sitting together we're taking a look back at season three we're going to look ahead to season four this is a normal recap that we do at the end of the season we'll probably start on the new one and we're also going to take this time while we're all together to record a special episode that will come out next week. We're going to play some of our favorite moments from season three. And then we're going to talk about, hey, what are our long-term plans for Go With The Heat? We're going into season four. That means there's 44 weeks left of Miami Vice. left. So we want to talk more about, hey, what's the long-term stuff? This time next year, what are we going to be working on? And I mentioned that in the last couple of weeks in the episodes that uh, we'd love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com or tweet at us at go with the heat, facebook.com slash go with the heat. And let us know what you think. What are some 80s shows that you would give as a recommendation that the, your go with the heat team should take a look at? But before we get that far down the road, let's take a look back at season three because. As we were going through this and we were compiling a list of favorite episodes, we started at first. I was like, I don't know. It's going to be really hard. There wasn't necessarily that many great episodes. I started going through and I was like, oh, that one was pretty good. Oh, that one was pretty good, too. <laughs> Actually, I kind of like all of these ones that are all right here. What kind so. of fan are you? You said there wasn't a lot of great episodes. <laughs> so let's talk about our favorite episodes. So here's the plan. We're going to talk about our favorite episodes. From season three, each of us are going to, we're going to go around and each of us are going to talk about what our favorite episodes are. Then we're going to talk about our favorite guest star because season three is full of them. So we're going to talk about our favorite guest stars. And then John has a very special look back at the music of season three. Something tells me it has a lot of Peter Gabriel in it. (laughs) (laughs) So let's start off with just some general look back at season three melissa you said well when we started season three that this is like your favorite season of miami vice yes it is i don't like the silliness i'm not about the goofy space aliens coming to get you <laughs> <laughs> i didn't i mean I, it's okay the silliness is okay but my favorite season is this season because of the seriousness and you know even though we lost Cito and it was very sad it, and it, it hurt it, it still hurts to think about it <laughs> even all these years later after watching it for the first time <laughs> but i think it, the, the show went a different direction and i liked it it was like it grew and it got deeper and you yeah. got to know more about what Crockett and even Tubbs they're like. And there was more episodes, individual episodes for each of them, too, which I thought was good. More Tubbs centric, more Gina, more Trudy. Not so much poor Stan, though. <laughs> he's still lonely. <laughs> Working on his magic routine. <laughs> but he's all by Busy himself. <laughs> Melissa, all business. <laughs> <laughs> and John. You know, we're kind of avoiding the elephant in the room in that Zito of Zito. And I think that in our favorite episodes, and that's a hard pick. That's a hard one to pick. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're we're not avoiding it, you know, because it is like the best episode. It is. <laughs> but it really is. You Zito. Know. I know. <laughs> So yeah, we're kind of we're kind of, we're kind of dance around that around those two episodes, mostly because of our anger at the Vice team and how they handled Zito's death, especially Crockett. You could just say yeah. it is Crockett. You could just say <laughs> yeah. we're all mad at Crockett for that, and he never <laughs> apologized to Stan either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Neither did Marty after saying this, Dan, that uh, Larry was a junkie. I know. <laughs> yeah, well, Marty did a lot of stuff to make him look self look like a jerk this, <laughs> this season. Yeah, this season, Marty really kind of looked like he checked out almost. He doesn't want to be in Vice anymore, like hiding in his office and just... <laughs> giving people the look (laughs) yeah i will say that i know that some challenges come forth in season four and marty brings himself back around and he still he sticks up for people Mm -hmm. and helps them and goes out on a limb and like you know like basically almost loses his job over some of the stuff that happens in season four and five so he Mm -hmm. comes back around in the end (laughs) he's never himself he never smiles though that never (laughs) happens he never smiles. <laughs> yeah, but the look has gone from being disciplinarian look to kind of just being like annoyed. Yeah, that's true. Point. Yeah, it used to be like your dad when you're in trouble. Like, oh no, well, your mom told you all about <laughs> mom told you all about that stuff I did. And now you're gonna come and yell at me. Now it's like, eh. <laughs> yeah. I don't really care that much. I think it's the weight of the mustache <laughs> preventing them from smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this season, the change to Dick Wolf meant that it was supposed to be there was more rip from the headlines. And it starts off really strong that way. Mm-hmm. It kind of peters out towards the end, right? Like, we don't stick with that rip from the headlines. Or if we do, it's really obscure stuff from mm-hmm. the headlines. Yeah, you know, some of the rip from headlines stuff directly correlated with some pretty big events at the time. And then some of it was just, I don't know, it felt like just kind of cat regular show stuff. That they that was supposed to be ripped from the headlines, and I know you know being so far forward in the future that uh, it's hard to know what was going on at a local or smaller levels. But there were definitely like the synthetic cocaine stuff and some of the stuff that's kind of like just regular cop show stuff. I think the big one would be the child adoption one. That's a big rip from the headline that would would affect people that not a, not a lot of people back then would have known about it. I still don't think the vice team knew about it after they fired all those shots into that airplane. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> Man, we could have hit some of those kids. They never went back over that, did they? <laughs> it definitely took a little getting used to some of the political aspects of the rip from the headlines. A lot of stuff about what was going on in South America. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Like, especially with the um, episode with the poet and all that stuff. Some of it goes out and you're like, I don't know that everybody in America really cares about this. <laughs> I'm not, like, maybe we should, but I don't know. <laughs> talk about our favorite episodes. So uh, we're going to go around the horn. We're going to talk about each of our favorite ones. And Melissa, why don't you kick us off on this? What are your My- favorite? My favorite, episodes. well, I mean, it was hard. I will say I had honorable mentions, but my favorite episode is the Good Caller episode number five. So that's the episode where they, it's that the, the young athlete and he gets with drugs and come to find out he not he, he was just doing it to get a pair of cleats and he's a football player. And, and of course, Crockett being the tender heart that he is, he goes out and buys him the cleats mm-hmm. and he takes them under his wing because he's also, you know, he was a high school football player, college football player. And in the end, that poor young man, I cry in that episode every time <laughs> he dies in the end. And it's like, actually, Crockett it was one of the times where it's not Crockett's fault. He actually did everything he was supposed to do. And he even said he would change evidence and stuff so the kid didn't have to do it. Yeah, the DA the went DA, out of his mm-hmm. way to make sure that he was part of the sting operation. Yeah, he made he gave him he made a deal with him, and then the DA went back on it because there was some death and explosions and stuff. And so, in the end, that poor kid got sacrificed, but the DA got his case. <laughs> <laughs> Strange <laughs> enough, I feel like I'm hearing this for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I know that's the episode where you happen to be gone. The one episode. That's yeah, with that's no the John. one episode with mm-hmm. no John. It was like the, one of the best episodes of the season. Yes, it was. It was a good. It's a good episode. I also <laughs> like obviously down for the count you know that's that's gonna be and i also like uh when irish eyes are smiling or crying sorry it's crying right mm-hmm. the first yeah, episode irish yeah. Eyes are crying. yeah 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 so i like that episode that's that gets an honorable mention but i like the the it's emotional Neeson, isn't it yes it's liam neeson yeah <laughs> no it's a gina it's everything i like that whole episode but yeah <laughs> every time i watch the good caller it always makes me cry because he was just a kid <laughs> <laughs> Well, my favorite episodes are all going to be part of a package. And the reason why I say I didn't pick just one, I picked a package, is because I love no-nonsense tubs. (laughs) I like them bitch-slapping and throwing people around. And we got three great tubs, aggressive tubs episodes. Aggressive tubs. (laughs) Walk Alone, where he's in the prison all by himself with no backup. And then Castillo does come in 
and do his kung fu magic through the yeah. prison. Yeah, dad has to him. use his yeah. ninjas to his skills to get him saved. Uh-huh. The afternoon plane where he's just busting into people's houses like, hey, what's going on in here? Any of you got a gun? <laughs> well, it's just him. There's no one else. I like to call that episode the Fantasy Island Tubs episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he wasn't messing around. He decided he was going to get another girlfriend of his killed. Uh-huh. He didn't care if she got shot. Calderon went in there with the worst plan to kill Tubbs <laughs> ever. I'm going to corner him on a little island, and then when I get there, I'm going to hunt him. <laughs> hunt him for sport. Yeah, why not just yeah. kill him when he got there? I never understood that. Thing. He was vastly unnumbered. They yeah, caught him. They knew thing, when like, he came in. Why like, don't you step off the plane and shoot him? Well, there you go. That's the end of that. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Well, they just shoot the airplane down. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, my favorite Tubbs episode and my favorite episode of season three in red tape, where Tubbs is, he wants his damn money. He wants it right <laughs> now. And I'm going back to New York. Screw y'all in Miami. I'm out of here. I'm done. Because they would never let this fly in New York. <laughs> if he didn't find that leak, he was going to start the next moonlighting. He was going to start a detective agency, detective tubs in New York City. He also so. used all kinds of funny sayings in that one. Like they, in New York, they'd be on this like white all rice. And they'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> well, don't forget the season three is what brought us the amazing word in chumping. Yes. <laughs> and we used the hell out of that. <laughs> she, he got chumped. <laughs> People are chumping around on him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When, he had, when he had Trudy, have you been chumping around on me? <laughs> she has too. <laughs> Even in the last episode of the season where, where he that coke out of that guy's hand. I know, right? <laughs> There's a guy that caves because he pretends like he's going to kick him again. He's like, like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> John, what's your favorite episode from the season? Well, I have two episodes tied to, kind of tied for my favorite, like Mom. One of them has a little bit of no-nonsense tubs in it. First one is Streetwise, episode 10, Bill Paxton. Wesley Snipes has the best. That is a good episode, too. The- the best death in <laughs> vice so far. Yeah. <laughs> he dies and falls about 10 feet backwards. <laughs> like he's pantomiming miming it. <laughs> but, and then obviously Bill Paxton, an undercover cop in love with a hooker, but not in love enough with the hooker to leave his wife. Nope. Or to pay for a uh, lodging for her. No. So she doesn't have to hook. <laughs> no, um, I mean, he wanted to keep his wife. I want to get rid of that. <laughs> She's a nurse. She oh, makes yeah. money. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that was a good episode because it was kind of you got that full circle like it, at the end of the episode she was back hooking and basically nothing had changed mm-hmm. also had crockett's music in it yeah has yes. crockett, crockett's I mean, music he's crockett's crockett music <laughs> featuring olivia brown exactly <laughs> the episode that i have with that is el viejo episode seven which is the willie nelson steve buscemi episode old man willie <laughs> old man willie and, and yeah it, and it's pretty much willie nelson i mean plays ex texas ranger and it's just a badass with his six shooter like total cowboy style and you can even see the envy on crockett's face you know <laughs> like I, I, i'm surprised he didn't just immediately go out and buy a pair of cowboy boots and a shooter he didn't you know, have to he had he those steal <laughs> stuff out of the evidence locker he just waited for old man <laughs> willie stuff to end up there <laughs> And, you know, there was so many great ones. And mostly you mentioned Down for the Count. And when I was going through the entire list, like, season three is really strong. Now, and it is really dark. Like, when you go back through and you look at yeah. the themes of every episode. Mm-hmm. Yes. And not all episodes are created equal. I do want to give an honorable mention to Shadow in the Dark, <laughs> our meat fondler episode. Um, I, I couldn't pick it as my favorite because, I mean, just it's because just it's silly. not good. <laughs> it's just silly. But it, I mean, just the fact that I, we have a meat fondler episode. Maybe uh, it could fantastic. be Maybe it could be our favorite holiday episode because it was Halloween. Yeah, it was a Halloween, <laughs> a real <laughs> Halloween episode. <laughs> Stealing pants and slapping meat. <laughs> we also got weird Crockett where he goes off the deep end. We still don't even know if that one was a dream or not. Who knows what the what yeah. is it? We still have no idea. <laughs> and an, an important part of our season four look ahead isn't to forget 
the episode in season three where Crockett gets a serial killer off it. Of we need to maintain that and remember it. <laughs> just keep that one in the back of your head. Mm-hmm. Just kind of remember that. It that's, just that's, makes that's, him look that's, so that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think of Crockett as stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that season three was probably Crockett's unluckiest season. Yeah, it, um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, getting people killed. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Everyone killing themselves in front of him. In high life players before they get a <laughs> ball to the face. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Getting people off a of death row who are guilty. Just everyone was just not crying. knowing that his girlfriend's a junkie. <laughs> not knowing that his girlfriend's a madam. Yeah, there's two girlfriends for him that were doing illegal things. <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't Crockett's ear. <laughs> all right so how about your favorite guest star john why don't you kick this one off all right so i feel like we already kind of talked about willie nelson steve buscemi i talked about bill paxton and wesley snipes and so the two guest stars who i'm going to call my favorite this year are because i felt they were the most entertaining guest stars for the most part first one the most entertaining guest star randall tex cobb <laughs> so it, he was the chili head yes <laughs> yes uh, here's my i love that man I, i'm sad I, i'm sad they killed him off i was hoping he'd come back a few times <laughs> i think you can't bring him back though he he, he would be too recognizable <laughs> chili pepper belly and if you don't recognize the name he was a boxer from 70 1977 to 93 and he actually a pretty good boxer he had a 43 7 and 1 record he also played the the trainer for the boxer in Down for the Count. That eventually puts Zito in the position where he's going to get killed. Yes. Through no fault of his own. So, Larry. <laughs> Larry! <laughs> the other one who I thought was very entertaining and one of my favorite people, uh, even today, I follow him on Twitter, the great George Takai. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he played Kenneth T- Tagaru. In, in by hooker by crook he's just fantastic just everything the way he plays the part and basically because he was pretty much throughout that episode smarter than everybody else oh yeah he's got everything figured out ahead of time they're trying to trick him and he's like i, I already know your cops <laughs> <laughs> melissa how about you what were your favorite guests uh, my favorite guest star the top one would be liam neeson i already mentioned <laughs> I'm sorry, but he's Liam Neeson. Come on. Like <laughs> he plays an Irishman to the T. <laughs> Who knew? He's actually Irish. <laughs> I think I mean I like that episode anyway, but yes, I like his performance. I think he's very believable. And he's he's a great love interest for Gina. I mean, come on, she got a little bit of the, the action from <laughs> Liam Neeson. <laughs> I, I don't think you, you can quantify someone as a great love interest when the per- other person <laughs> shoots them at the end. <laughs> well, hey, when the loving was happening, it was good, right? <laughs> That's what I <laughs> meant <laughs> I, I will say he was quick like some of them dates started out walking on the beach and ended with come back to my hotel <laughs> exactly <room." laughs> he had her back uh and i guess i my my second would be as a as a runner-up would be lou diamond phillips in red tape even and especially because of his dramatic death <laughs> he, he gets for the most dramatic being shot because he didn't have any gunshots in him but he still went with it <laughs> one leg down then the next leg down also but he was too stupid to figure out that Tubbs was not actually <laughs> like and he died thinking Tubbs was a bad guy but go for it he, he went for it in there <laughs> that was like one of his first roles <laughs> so well my favorite guest star is a real actor unlike all the other schmucks that have appeared on my media. you call him Liam Neeson not a real thing I'm gonna call him and tell him what you said I'm gonna tweet George he's gonna find you <laughs> our Academy Award winning yes. guest star that appeared in Duty and Honor Naing S. Najor an Academy Award winning actor but even more so than that he survived the Chimer Rouge from the Pol Pot regime his wife and unborn son died while they were in camp He escaped, came to America, starred in The Killing Fields, won an Academy Award for it. Somehow I got into Vice. Yeah, how did he get him to go on Vice? (laughs) Bravo to that casting agent. Yeah, Yeah. I know. (laughs) Uh And then to be shot and killed later over something that's petty theft. And the reason why I picked him out as being my favorite guest star, one, in Duty and Honor, he's great. Yeah. Because him and Castillo are like the fox and the hound. <laughs> They're yeah. palling around, <laughs> eating Thai food together. Just a reminder, like we see 
dad with no mustache in that episode. And Just... yeah, with long hair. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and clearly he is like staying at dad's house. <laughs> like they, they and they're pounding around the whole time, and at the end he finds out he's not even a cop. He doesn't even know who he is. Doesn't even know his real name. Yeah, he's great in that episode. That episode is really good, and then he's just he's an amazing guy. So it's hard to skip him. Yeah, it's end. true. Yeah, a, a great guest star in season three on Miami Vice. Mm -hmm. So now let's go talk about John has created a list of the best music moments in season three, and there are plenty. Not named Peter Gabriel. <laughs> Leave yeah. Peter Gabriel alone. I think we talked about Peter Gabriel enough. <laughs> I, I just wanted to go through. I just wanted to kind of touch base on what we got, what we had a chance to see in the music and some of the stuff that I talked about and some of the interesting people and some of the big names we saw. We got some great bands. We got musicians like Dire Straits, Brian Adams, Bon Jovi, Jefferson oh, Brian Air Adams. Airplane. My heart. Then you follow that up with Starship. Screw those guys. I, I had Bon Jovi in between. <laughs> <laughs> I had <a> Spacer. <laughs> and aside from all the great musicians, we also got to see how talented the cast is. We got a lot of music from them. We had Don Johnson with Olivia Brown and Streetwise. We got to talk about Don Johnson's album, which was huge at the time. I owned it. <laughs> <laughs> then toward the end of the season, we also got some covers from Sandra Santiago, and she actually she did a fantastic job with them. And it was really interesting because they picked some really old 30s jazz and style stuff music. you don't have to pay licensing rights for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Pretty much. <laughs> exactly. So, in fact, one of them was so rare that it took me forever to track down what it, what it, what it even was. <laughs> Aside from all that, I mean, how can you not love getting Buck Buck in our music? <laughs> Walter Bruce that. Willis in the song <laughs> Respect Yourself. <laughs> the greatest music video ever made. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, my favorite is the reviews from it. It was surprisingly okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honest. <laughs> Honest reviews. And Willis can't shout songs quite as well as Don Johnson. <laughs> hey. Are you trying to say Don Johnson can't sing? I'll fight you for that. <laughs> so we also got to learn some tidbits from from some of our artists that we didn't know. I love Billy Idol. I know a lot about him. I did not know that he was almost cast at in Terminator 2 Judgment Day as T-1000. The only reason he didn't get the part was that he got in an accident and hurt himself. <laughs> so, I mean, just think about that. He could Billy Idol could have been part of... Of the Terminator franchise, and where are we at? Movie five now? Yeah, at least that. I can't imagine him next to Arnold Schwarzenegger. That'd be quite the size difference. Yeah, he's not very big. Yeah. <laughs> well, and if you remember T one thousand, he was a pretty clean cut guy in the movie, so they went a complete different direction when they went away from that. Lastly, we also got the lovable small artists that are always interesting. We got Laws Nitto with the song We Touch, and this is the guy who got Gene Simmons to build a studio in his house. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out, building a studio is hard. <laughs> Damn contractors. <laughs> so, and at the end of everything I learned about him, I also learned he is now a hypnotherapist <laughs> and NLP <laughs> practitioner in London, and for just 65 pounds, you can get the first hour and a half of his services. <laughs> so it was a fun season in music. <laughs> and so many of them built their musical careers off the back of stolen merchandise from David Bowie's <laughs> truck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Every one of them. So yeah, season three, now that we're looking back on it, it's a pretty good season. Actually, now that we've gone through it again, like, listen looked at the music again looked at the guest stars look at the episode list like actually i don't know how you follow this season up actually and uh looking forward to season four which is what we're going to do now uh, has a hard time doing that <laughs> hey you can't judge it yet you mean you're not looking forward to ufos <laughs> <laughs> let's go look ahead to season four so first before we get into season four as Fans of the show know I also do a companion show that goes along with it called This Week in Vice, where I cover the news that's happening in the time period when this episode of Vice, whatever the episode number is, aired on TV. So that you get perspective on, hey, what was happening in the 80s? 
other than just Miami Vice, what else was happening in the 80s when Miami Vice was king? So I, looking forward to season four, what's going to happen in the timing from when season four starts to it ends? Because now this is an actually a show that is ripped from the headlines. That's, that's just because Dick Wolf in season four also becomes a co-producer of the show with Michael Mann. That's how far up the ladder he goes. So this is an officially this is officially a show that is, quote, ripped from the headlines. So I want to look ahead to some of the headlines that are going to happen during this time when season four is on the second half of 1987 and then the first half of 1988. Uh, Star Trek, the next generation premieres, John. Yeah. And um, (laughs) that was probably the greatest thing to happen. Uh, I'm just going to say in the 80s. (laughs) (laughs) Not that I'm a Trekkie or anything. (laughs) Melissa, the first Royal Rumble. That what is happened? important. That is very important. <laughs> Baby Jessica will fall down that well. I still need to know how she fell down that well. I'm going to have to go back and look up that again. <laughs> how would the baby fall down a well? Where were her parents? <laughs> I'm still not convinced. Someone didn't just drop her down. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who was watching her? <laughs> Did they stiff the babysitter? <laughs> Something. And for some reason, we continue on this path that there's still a lot of IRA attacks. and Lots of planes falling out of the sky. I don't know what was happening in the 80s and air travel. But every week I could talk about a plane crash. Wow. that it, It's true. It's scary, too. <laughs> then the top music in 1987, the end of 1987 and 1988, Bad and Man of the Mirror by Michael Jackson, will be number one. Other no, other number ones will be I Think We're Alone Now and Could Have Been by Tiffany. So if you're hanging out at the mall, you might have had a shot. I, had, I had a Tiffany single <laughs> tape, of course. Get Out of My Dreams, Get Into My Car, Billy Ocean will be number one. Never Gonna Give You Up. That's so, right, people. You're about to get real cool. And Melissa, most importantly, Faith and Father Figure by George Michael. Most importantly, of course, because George Michael is the king of the 80s. <laughs> Top movies during this time. The number one movies in the box office, Fatal Attraction, Running Man, yeah. Three Men and a Baby. Just saying the ladies might enjoy that one. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> that might have been made for them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Murphy Raw, Good Morning Vietnam, Beetlejuice, and Colors. So many good movies on that list. Yeah. Seven is an amazing year of movies. It is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just Good Morning Vietnam, probably one of my favorite Robin Williams movies. Um, it's number one for like 11 weeks. It was a very popular movie when it yeah. came out. I get why. And, uh, and I just, I actually just happened to watch it recently. And I always forget, one, how funny Robin Williams really is. And also just how serious that movie was. So looking forward to season four. The- <laughs> uh, jury's out on season four when you read reviews about it so melissa's going into this she's seen the season john and i we have not so john a couple quick notes it's shorter than than season three it only has 22 episodes not 24 so we're too short on this one compared to last season it's also got what's considered to be the worst episode of miami vice in missing hours I can con- I can <laughs> convene with that that it is the worst episode. Really, it's worse than the meat fungler. Y- yeah, <laughs> yes, it's definitely meat worse. As far as I can tell, missing missing hours has Trudy investigating UFOs. Oh, that's the UFO. <laughs> See, then it can't be the worst one. It has UFOs in it. Oh, it's it's a missing body and UFOs, and they think maybe the aliens took the body. I believe it. Aliens. <laughs> yep. John, unfortunately, has one episode with no outside music in Hell Hath No Fury. That's fine. I, you know, I, I can take the week off. <laughs> That's not <laughs> a bad episode something. for the record. It's a good episode. <laughs> I think it is. Good. And by the end of the season, it'll be ranked 41. Those people are crazy. <laughs> they don't know how to rank things, okay? <laughs> Wasn't that bad. So, as far as I can tell, what's going to happen in season four is that we're going to take a shift in why I'm calling it the Dallas season. It's because it's going to get a little bit more soap opera y. It's going to add some more sci fi and mysticism. And, that and soap opera sci fi? Well, I'm just saying, like, the combination oh, okay. of all of them. Like, they're going to try to watch more... Days of Our Lives. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's like more like horror, though. I stopped right around the time when John was possessed by the devil. No, that's Marlena. <laughs> they do an exorcism on her. She's raised up in the bed and everything. I watched Days of Our Lives all the way through. <laughs> I think it was John. <laughs> because John Black was was at, 
pretending to be Roman. That's probably what you're thinking of. Oh. And then it became, then everyone figured out he was John Black. He wasn't Roman <laughs> because he never looked like Roman. <laughs> He's a completely different person. <laughs> so they're going to try and line it up a little bit too, like with the sci fi and the mysticism and stuff. They're going to try and make it a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> So okay, good. they're going to bring it back, try and bring it back to season one and two. But unfortunately, that's, we know it doesn't work out. Season five ends up being the last season of the show. We also learned that, we, well, I also learned that we're going to uh, never see some of our favorite guest stars again. As some of our show regular guest stars, we won't see Valerie again. We nope. will see the very last image of Noogie. Mm -hmm. It's not a good one. <laughs> You know, and that's what makes us unique in all of Miami Vice world is that we love the Nook Man. Okay, don't you don't <laughs> speak for me. I don't love the Nook Man. Sorry, and I'm with everyone else. The Nook Man's annoying. I was okay with the Nook Man being gone. <laughs> Izzy, I love Izzy. That man is hustling all the time. <laughs> He's got things to do and people to see and <laughs> pretending to do, but <laughs> not the Nook Man. No, but still, I mean, Valerie. I mean, that's yeah. She she must gone like witness protection or something, trying to hide <laughs> from Tubbs. <laughs> But, but, John, there are returning <laughs> guest stars that will come back. But not in their same role. No. So. <laughs> Bing Rames will be back. Isai Morales. Iman. Jan Hammer will return as his character before. He will be the wedding singer again. Well, he can't <laughs> play anything else. I mean. <laughs> and Stanley Tucci will come back twice as two different people. Because <laughs> no one will notice. <laughs> I can attest in that I never noticed that those people were the same until we started doing this. Oh and yeah, so we we were doing this, and I was like, "Oh yeah, they are the same people." I'm convinced. You forget like week to week who was in it. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I, I'm convinced. Well, especially since uh, this is before the era of DVRs yep. and everything, so yeah. it's not like you can just rewind it or rewatch it easily. Yeah, exactly. You couldn't go back and be like, "Hey, is, this, is that the same guy?" Because you didn't have the episode. It's mm -hmm. like, well, man, I don't know, maybe. I, I am convinced that at some point, uh, especially since Stanley Tucci shows up twice as different characters in the same season. At some point, someone was in the production meeting and was like, I don't think anyone will notice. No one seems to notice the last few hundred times we've done it. Yeah, Stanley Tucci's like a regular, though. They just really keep using him. <laughs> He's got his own office. <laughs> well, and that's what's funny is that when I look through the guest stars every week, a common theme is usually that the uncredited roles or like the the guy who plays bodyguard number one they're usually the ones that get used in like five episodes mm -hmm. bodyguard two bodyguard seven <laughs> <laughs> some of the other guest stars are going to be brian dennehy ben stiller question mark <laughs> uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how that one works out chris rock isaac hayes julia roberts and sheena easton and now sheena easton's in a bunch of episodes all together i wonder what that has to do with I'm not supposed to say. I'm not allowed to spill the beans. <laughs> but most importantly for season four, it's the Sunny Burnett arc where Sunny gets amnesia. And it, I think that's what we're all waiting for. It's really amazing. Mm -hmm. It's actually really amazing. <laughs> not so much for Tubbs because he gets on the losing end of that. One, but <laughs> and unfortunately, Tubbs is basically going to disappear in this season. But he has his beard, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like we're losing another character, basically, because he's going to be in it so little. Like, it was so bad when I was reading about it that people were calling it the Don Johnson show because that's basically it was just about him. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> and people had a problem with that. <laughs> Whatever. Really Not true fans. I get it. I I'm interested to see what the music's going to look like. Going from Michael Mann, who did a lot of, a lot of soft rock, and going to Dick Wolf, where we a lot of heavy metal, a lot of darker music. Yeah. So, uh, and a little bit of punk mixed in. So it's interesting to see where it's going to go. And I also meant to throw this in, in the music segment, but I do want to throw an honorable mention to Grace Jones, who showed up in my music this season. Thank you for bringing us Wolf Lundgren. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thank appreciate you. it. <laughs> thank you for bringing that man to America and making so everyone could find him. He may have never been in Rocky if it wasn't for her. Mm -hmm. it's, no, it's true because she yeah. was going to go back to college and she said, no, you should come with me. You should be my bodyguard and you should go touring with me. It's all because of her. And she got him the interview. She got him like the audition. Yeah. To be on Rocky. So he, we would have never seen that man if it wasn't for her. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and we I are mean, blessed to see him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, and I probably couldn't name you one Grace Jones song, but just the fact that she brought us Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. 
Well, to give you an example of some music, some bands are going to be in season four, John. Depeche Mode will make a comeback. Yellow will appear multiple times throughout the season. Bob Marley and the Wailers, James Brown, Sheena Easton, hmm. the Smiths, mm-hmm. Stray Cats, Don Henley, Ooh. Mr. Mister, Stray Billy Cats Idol, will be fun. Uh, Aerosmith, yeah, Aerosmith, Iggy Pop, and Glenn Fry, Smugglers Blues, and a bullet for Crockett will come back. <laughs> As Mosa looks suspicious across the room. <laughs> I know nothing. I'm not supposed to know anything. I don't know anything. About- Just, you know, John, and like, and look, and In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins is going to make a comeback in that Bullet for Crockett episode, too. I mean, I may, it might be a flashback episode. Just saying. I'm not sure. I'm just saying. I, I don't know. I think I'm more interested to talk about Echo and the Bunnymen or Big Pig. Echo and um, the Bunnymen was actually a really big band. Really? <laughs> yeah, they were. They were really I, big. I, I actually, I, honestly, I can't wait to learn about them because that, that's just a fantastic band name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's going to do it for us this week. That's This has been our review on season three and our look ahead to season four we are a mere two weeks from starting season four and seeing tubs fantastic beard i can't (laughs) wait for that (laughs) that is going to do it for us this week we would love to hear from you email us go with the heat at gmail.com tweet at us at go with the heat get us on facebook facebook.com slash with the heat the best way though email us go with the heat at gmail.com that's the absolute best way to give us a shout we would also encourage you Go to that podcaster, the podcaster platform of choice, and give us a review. It would really help us out if you would leave us a review. It helps people find the show. It shows us what some areas that we might improve on. You know what? Give us a review, but don't write in review. No one ever really reads those reviews. Go ahead and write in there what your favorite Sheena Easton song is, because we're going to learn a lot about Sheena Easton in season. Just leave your review, one to five stars, whatever. You, I would ask for the max. And give us the four eggplants, whatever the top rating is on your podcatcher platform. Five peaches. <laughs> and then just write about your favorite Sheena Easton song inside of the, the inside of the review. Be sure to check out the website, GoWithTheHeat.com. You click on subscribe on all the ways to subscribe, including TuneIn and Google Play and iTunes. Be sure to check out the support page. You can find all the places where you can leave us those reviews, how you can email us, how you can contact us. And hey, you know what? If you like the show us a little tip those options are there too be sure to come back next week when we have a very special episode where we're going to take a look back at some of our favorite moments that we recorded during season three and then we're also going to talk about our future with go with the heat and how we want to expand this show so be sure to come back next week we'd love to have you come back and hear our conversation on that that's going to do it for us this week we hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you all next time bye pal